Oh my God. <laughs> oh dear. You know better than I do how it's changed. But, um, well, I have lived in Clapham for at least 40 years. Wait a minute. Let me just think. Let me see. When did I start living in Clapham? My son was all... Yeah, yeah. When my son was two, three, whatever. Yeah. So, anyway, since 67, more earlier than that. Anyway, more than 40 years, but anyway. Yeah, I've, I've lived in Clapham for 40 years more. And um, I remember it when it was really dilapidated um, before Thatcher. And uh, since then, there's been this change, this change in London, like there was in New York and big cities anyway, um, because there was... Um, this deregulation and everybody could exploit anything without control and so what happened is that we all found better and better ways to take all the treasure out of the earth and to live on oil and coal and whatever make all that we're absolutely inundated with plastic now aren't we it was uh, it was really dilapidated and um you know i've got a fashion business and well, at first, I used to be able to get things made in London, little workshops, all kinds of things. That's mostly gone. It's almost gone. London has changed a lot. There was always something to discover around some corner or other. And now, you know, it's all been sort of completely cleaned and all lit up. And where I live in Clapham, it's probably quite successful. But if you go to places just a little bit more out in Richmond, like... It, if you go to places just a little bit more out than, than ours, then you find people all the time. No, it happens in Clapham too. People start, you know, a beauty parlour or all kinds of things. There's all this entrepreneurial activity, but quite a lot of it, except for the chains, they don't, they don't last very long, actually, even, even now, even with all this, you know, thing. So, yes, I mean... I love London for its museums and its um, culture, its theatre, all this stuff. And um, anyway, I, used, uh, I don't know if I... I still like Clapham. Um, when I first moved to Clapham, my boyfriend was Malcolm McLaren. His grandmother had a, a flat in one of these 30s buildings. And... Um, there was a room. There was room for him to sleep on the sofa. I had two children. I got a job as a school teacher. Uh, sorry, I am a school teacher, and I went for a job. And at this time, my little boy was about eight months old, and the elder one was about four. And I was taking them to nursery and to school, and I lived in a one room. And I pretended I was just single in order to get that room. And so I put the children in the bed and I slept on the floor. And there were mice running over me. And um, it was just Clapham South, Cavendish Road. Um, but London was, was very dilapidated then. Uh, so, I, and, and it was so difficult to find, to find a flat. And we eventually did find one, and it was, we were so lucky. And we got a flat because some hippies had been living in it, and I think they were swatting, squatting, and they had left it in a mess. They'd painted it completely red. The whole flat was red inside, including the iron windows. It was like being inside one of those telephone boxes, only everything sort of iron and red. Anyway, and so we got that flat, um, because somehow or other they just thought that it was in a bit of a mess and we managed to get it. And it was really, really brilliant. But, um, you know, it must be just dreadful for people trying to find any accommodation here now. I mean, I had a job, I was a school teacher, you know, and um, I don't know how, how people manage, but I know, all I know is it's getting worse, yeah. Well, you've probably had other people explain to you how brilliant this housing cooperative is. And it's so nice. People have made such a lovely job of 
making improving their flats and and um you know i read the story you you've got you've um it's all been documented i know i read the story of one lady who had to leave her flat and they sold it for more than a million and she'd had it from nothing and it, the million pounds was completely down to all her repairs in this and you know making this wonderful house and she said how they don't go anywhere near it in that area they can't they're too heartbroken you know that they had to give it up anyway and so it's dreadful but what is really important i think is the community and the idea that children can play together and um, in rectory gardens it's really lovely it's it's not it's there's no traffic coming through and children really can play together there and you know go and knock on each other's doors and it's absolutely brilliant and i'll tell you who lives there in rectory gardens is mr newman who used to be thunderclap newman but also my electrician when i had my shop down in wells end and and um, never i don't know his name uh, but i because I, he was always quite formal and i always had to call him mr newman but i adored him he's such a lovely man and uh, I hope he was a good electrician, I don't remember, but he's still doing it. So, you know, fixing people's houses, all working together, it was absolutely, it's absolutely great. And uh, of course, what's happening now is shocking, shocking, but it's also incredibly stupid. That's what, what it's, it's shocking, it's horrible, and it's stupid. And it's just, the idea of breaking up these communities and um, then selling the, the houses off, not to poor people, of course, because they haven't got the money, but to people who want second homes or they're speculators. Or I don't know who wants this house. Or maybe somebody who just sold their house the other side of the river in Chelsea for 10 million and they want to now buy one for 1 million you know i mean it's absolutely terrible how everything today is it's storing up terrible problems for the future that's the bad economy anyway we know that but um but what's happening today is really you know we see the capitalist system in all its terror and aggression and um it's like it's like a monster. What, what, what is happening is that people are treated as commodities. Everything's got a price. It's something that has to be bought and sold all the time. And let me just tell you how the capitalist system runs. It's very simple. It is run by bankers, central banks, who are private banks. Apparently there's 140, 150 of these banks in the world. And what they do is they print money, and that means that there's always this inflation. But they don't, they try not to print money, they don't print that much money if they can help it, because what they do is they live off the interest. So they create debt, and so they don't want the debt paid back, they just want the interest. And with this interest, it has accumulated to an amount, an amount that is totally out of proportion with reality of course they want to lend it to all the monopolies anybody who's going to still keep on trying to get oil or fracking gas out of the ground or anything it's just it's capitalism in its death throes is being trying the politicians are trying to keep it alive and um and it's killing us capitalism is what's caused the environmental problem very simple because it's taken everything out of the ground treated people like commodities the world is run for cheap labor or for cannon fodder as they used to say um, because don't forget capitalism is a war economy and we need to convert to a green economy because a green economy is a human economy it's good for people it's an economy that could give us peace and not war we don't want competition and war what we want is collaboration and community that's what we want and um, so austerity it what austerity is it's just a way of the banks all down the chain 
through the monopolies, right through the chain of government, the chain that holds it all together. Yeah, what, what they're doing is aust austerity. It's just a means to try to conceal this. Yes, you keep on ripping everybody off. You keep on sucking up all the profits in the world. You already own everything. The banks own things because they own the debt. So they own everything. And yet, they keep, how often have people heard of a poor country that is forced, it's been forced to borrow money, and then in the end, it's forced to sell off all its assets, all its goodness, grow lettuce when they don't have enough water just to pay off the interest. You know, I mean, and so we can see now, we really can see it, even in our privileged part of the world, we can see the growing poverty. It's happening here as well. We know that. You, Everybody knows about this now. It's happening in America. It's happening here. It's happening in the privileged part of the world. Anyway, so austerity is just a way of, well, we're going to keep on getting off all the profits, sucking it all up, and we will just squeeze the poor people. And then people don't, you know, then... then um, then, then it won't look so, so blatant and so obvious. And so if, if you ever want to protest against austerity, what you're protesting against is capitalism. And you're protesting against capitalism, which is destroying the earth. And by the way, the end of capitalism, the need to switch to a green economy, there's no choice. Do you know why? Because capitalism runs on fossil fuels and they're not easy to get anymore. They're, they're, they're being subsidised all the time. They're being subsidised by poisoning the land. They're being subsidised by the debt because the people who are doing all these extreme extractions can't furnish their debts anymore. They've, they've spent more on getting it out than they've, they're selling it for. And, and what's more, it's all plateaued, it's getting more and more difficult, so more of it, and they're getting more and more into debt, they're going bankrupt. I mean, the world is going bankrupt because of it, and, and we could have a wonderful, wonderful life. The green economy isn't just about jobs, it's about respect for people, fair distribution of money, more nurses. We d why do we need bankers? you know, to have all the money. Why are football players? Why can't we have nurses and teachers and artists? And, and in fact, you know, I'll tell you the real thing is economy that promotes the idea of selling rubbish. If you did not make that rubbish, blue teddy bears or the latest technology, you would actually, um, be, it would be better to pay people not to work. The economy would actually be better off if they stopped producing the rubbish and you paid people who didn't have work not to work. It would be like that. But you know the capitalist system. It has, you know, um, it has got rid of all the jobs in favour of doing it all mechanistic, the machine. You know, go down the underground. There's nobody working on it anymore, hardly. It's all machines, you know go to the supermarket, it's all machines. And don't forget big fish, suck up little fish. Where are the small businessmen? Where is all the lively thing? We've got to switch to a people's economy and that's a green economy. And we have to do it anyway. So the, the point I'm making, this is really, really important. If we um, don't do it, and we just sit and wait and let the governments keep on doing what they're doing, then we won't have any chance. We will have mass extinction within very short time. And we, we absolutely have to do it. So the sooner we convert, the, the more we save lives, even. And as for this, this stupid thing of the government's um, cost, thinking of everything in terms of how can we make a profit, um, it, it's just storing up trouble for the future because you know, and I'm not going to explain it, you've got other people who have explained that, that it's, that it's bad economy. What we're talking about as well is that London is such a buzzing, active, cultural place 
And part of that culture is definitely the fact that you can find areas that are really, you know, upbeat and doing stuff. There's all kinds of things, you see, that um, all the things that make London interesting, um, and apart from the great, wonderful National Gallery and the Barbican and, and the South Bank and, or, and the theatres, this is really great. And there still are theatres in, in pubs and, and, and these are fantastic, all that, because they're more affordable as well, which is great. Um, and that's where, um, you know, things do, they do start on the ground, activities. And, um, you know, they're not impresarios who come in and impose some sort of idea on people. They're, they're things that grow and develop. I'm a big supporter of Battersea Arts Centre. I think it's wonderful to have a local theatre, you know. And um, community, this is what really is so important. And, um, you know, there's other things like, for example, we are part of the of the world that only cares about profit. It doesn't give jobs to people. There isn't the skill base to make our crafts anymore. It's all outsourced, God knows where, you know. And um, all our artistic activity and everything is just being, um, well, obliterated, I don't know, swamped. There's, there's a wonderful place near to here, and it's got a bar in it called the Doodle Bar. And it's really great and we often go there for meetings and we do all kinds of political stuff talking down there it's it's near the river where the weir is and it's so attractive all around there you know where the ships stayed in the water and you know i don't know what you call it there they are waiting and barges and things it's really good and um nice little cafes and things around there and that and i heard that, it, that, they, that they might be pulling it down. And I said to the people in Foster's over there, I said, let's try and do something. For example, well, those buildings are super. They're really, really old, fantastic buildings. And I don't know if they're going to pull down, but we could, put, we could have theatre there. We could really extend, which is actually an activity because they've got a table tennis thing in the garden, not in the garden, underneath the on the concrete. They've got all kinds of things that people have started doing themselves. They have boxing down there. People are starting to do stuff down there and I was saying, you know, it'd be really great if we um, if we did have a theatre. And then I found out it's too late, it's already sold. Anyway, um, what it, it, we, it's an absolute scandal, we know this, that, that the, the, plan, the government plan is to build 200 more high-rise flats and sell them to rich people. They're luxury flats supposed to be, except apparently there's no control and they're not even being built properly. You know, they're rushing to get them up there, I expect. And then Russell Brand was obviously, you know, um, Russell Brand was on the news as well because he was supporting some ladies who were going to get thrown out of their council flats and they said we're not going. And the government will just take these people to court one by one and get rid of them, you know, like pick them off. If you don't agree, you'll never get another house and all this and the housing list is just building. What are these people doing? They're living in bed and breakfast or where are they? And, you know, and so pulling down council houses, this is what's happening at the Elephant and Castle. Anyway, it's just disgusting. And what I want to say is that our government, the main parties, not the Green Party, the Green Party have got a brilliant agenda for what they would like to do. But um, the, the main parties, they are so delayed. They're like they're living in a world that doesn't exist anymore and they're trying to keep it like it was for their mates and for the big people at the top who are the, the, the dark people, they don't even know them, the bankers, you know, that nobody knows who they are really. And, um, and, so the business, uh, and so the government just has this key all the time. What's good for business, what makes a profit, do that. They're not thinking about people at all. And in fact, they don't care about people. They don't care about people at all. And that's proof is, is that they want to do fracking. 
And for example, I don't think that one member of that government has ever tried to visualise what that would be. It would actually be a fracking well the size of Trafalgar Square with all its ponds and lorries and things. And um, there would be one in every field in 60% of England. I mean, there'd be nothing else left. They're just so stupid. They don't even know what's going on. They just have this reflex, business, money, whatever. And I'll tell you what's really clever, what the government are doing. They have, um, they have um, cut in half the funding to Lambeth Council. Did you know that? They've cut it in half. And uh, I got a note, a thing through my door, a leaflet through my door that that's what's happened. And I do know that where Caroline Lucas is in Brighton in the Green Party, they've this year they've cut off 20-something million from their thing. But they've halved the budget in, in Lambeth. And so the pressure is on the council to get quick money and, you know, to, to run just the basic services. You know, forget, you know, plants in tubs and stuff. You know, it's just, you know, how can we keep everything, you know, how can we get how can we get get the rubbish cleared and you know, they don't have it's really, really bad. And this is what austerity is doing. But whatever happens, people should try to resist it because even with this half a budget, it's still rotten bad economy, false economy you're going to have an ever-growing housing list of people who've got nowhere to live. Are they, for example, being, um, are they being kept alive in bed and breakfast houses? You know, they probably haven't got a job because all the jobs are being, people, the government doesn't care about jobs, just cares about how do we make money and um, how do we pay, I don't know, whatever they do. Russell Brand is right, whatever they do, it's wrong, and whatever they do, it's stupid. And um, it's, it's just a rule of thumb, but it's absolutely the case. The press don't echo the reality of, of what um, people think. People are so passionate about this. Young people are so passionate about this. I went to the Duke of Edinburgh Awards to give awards to all these young kids a hundred of them I had to give an award to. There were three other people giving them to, 100, to each a hundred. And I started talking to them about all of this. And they were so pleased that I'd brought it out. They felt really relaxed. The people in the palace who ran the Duke of Edinburgh Award were really pleased for me to be talking to these young people. It meant the young people thought, well, we can say anything here. We can say all these things we really care about. You know, it was really great. We had the most wonderful time. Young people really, you know, are very fired up and they really care about things. And what, they, what we're ultimately caring about is saving the planet. And, you know, I'll just tell you that when, the reason I got so worried about the urgency of, of turning it all around... The way we turn it all around is we need a green economy, not capitalism. But the way I got worried in all this is because the famous scientist, um, James Lovelock, he said about six or seven years ago, I read it in the newspaper, he thought by the end of this century there would only be one billion people left. You know, I mean, talk about storing up trouble for the future. Everything you do, if you, if you protest... The, 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 the um, what's it called, the acquisition of the, these um, houses, these homes by people. You're protesting against everything that's ruining the planet and we really have to change. And of course we know why we have to change. We know why the capitalist system has come to an end because the oil is just not there anymore. Except very, very expensive. We've gone into that. I mean, they haven't got the funding from the government and they should make that very public to, to not only the local council, it must apply to all the councils to some extent. I don't know whether the government give, you know, cuts off less of the councils they like and more of the councils they don't like, but there should be a definite a, a revelation about all of this, um, a national 
um, sort of graph even of what the government has just done to take away the funding and to say and, and at the back of it should be the fact that austerity is you know it is working and this is what's what's so terrible they are trying to work a system that is short term disaster for people and long term um, even you know un unimaginable disaster and I'd, and the council should be on the side of people not on the side of the government and that's one of the things they could do I think it's dreadful how they just go around try, trying to pick everybody off one by one and I just think that the if that the cows that we should just get as much publicity for this and the people should stick together and ask Russell Brown to come and you know pay a visit I don't know it's 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 probably happening everywhere and it's certainly happening in London which apparently is the most attractive city in the world for people who want to come to people want to come to London more than anywhere but they're killing the actual reason why people do want to come you know they're killing killing the creativity the people power the 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 planet power they're killing everything, you know, and um, going to be left with, well, um, where can we go to? Let's not stay in London. As I'd love to move to somewhere else right now, actually, but too old. People must protest. There's two words to remember, capitalism and urgent. It has to be done. Anyway, urgent, yeah. <laughs>